Hi, I'm Kevin Hartley and welcome to Kevin Hartley Photography in my office. This is a channel that I've set up to share my experiences of wildlife and nature with others. So let's go. Okay, one of the most common questions I'm asked is do you need camouflage equipment to get the wildlife images that you get? It's a really subjective question and it can be a subjective answer. My answer is sometimes you do, sometimes you don't and that all depends on the target that you're after. So what I want to do in this video is share with you my knowledge and my experience of field craft out in the field photographing wildlife. So where does that experience come from? Well, I've spent 24 years in the British Army. These basic five tips that I'm going to go through with you today are the five basic principles I was taught as a 16 year old soldier and even after 20 years after leaving the military those five principles I use every single day when I go out into the field to photograph wildlife. If you're sitting in a hide then you're not going to need to be using these principles because the wildlife will come to you. However if like today like me you're out here in the field you're trying to get close to wildlife to get the photographs that you're after then you're going to need to be using um, field craft skills. So what do we mean by field craft? Well field craft really is the te techniques that you use out in the field to remain undetected. Camouflage is purely the use of colours and patterns to fool the eye so that you can still remain undetected and concealment is about hiding again so that you can't be detected. I think it's important to understand those three principles. So what I want to do now is cover those five basic principles that I learned as a 16 year old soldier that 20, 20 years after leaving the military I still use every time I go out into the field. They're not difficult, it's not about trying to teach you how to be an SAS sniper, it's just about applying a little bit of common sense in your approach to field crafting out, out in the field. So let's go. When it comes to camouflage and concealment of field craft out in the field, we've only got to look at wildlife itself to, to see how they survive and adapt in that environment and the natural way that they blend in with the surroundings. Having some of the best, what could be considered to be some of the best photography gear around, 800mm lens, Canon R5, doesn't mean that I'm going to get close to the wildlife. It helps but with the use of camouflage and concealment and fuel craft skills it allows us to get that a little bit closer. So. What I want to do now is look at the type of kit that I carry that I think that I need at certain times, I don't need it all the time and what we'll do is we'll look at what I consider like as a basic set of kit that I carry all the time and then the more advanced type of stuff depending on the target that I'm looking for. Okay so what kit do I carry with me or do I have available to me um, for field craft and camouflage and concealment out in the field? Basically I have two systems, I have a basic system which is over here and then I have a more advanced system which is over here and I'll briefly explain that to you. Basic system, hat, gloves, balaclava, a snood, scrim net or face veil as demonstrated here on the, the camera and tripod, a camouflage jacket. That's the basic system that I will carry with me at all times. And the real key to it is the scrim nets, they really are brilliant. Lightweight, cheap, easy to carry, we then have the more advanced type of systems. We have the 3D camouflage system, jacket, trousers, head covering, gloves, and then the ghillie suit. Hardly ever use this to be honest with you, um, but I've got it if I need it. So the majority of the time I have the, the basic kit. Hat, gloves, a couple of scrim nets, and a face covering. Having all this equipment from the basic system to the more advanced system including the ghillie suit doesn't mean that you're going to get close to your target or the wildlife to photograph them. It's knowing how and when to use them that, that counts and that's what we're going to look at next. All of this kit are simply aids that allow you as a wildlife photographer to get closer to the wildlife in order to get the images that you're after. Okay, before we go into the, 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 the basic five tips to fuel craft, 
camouflage and concealment. Just want to give you a little bit of a reminder of a video I did previously on observation skills. And it's important when it comes to fuel craft in the field that we understand the wildlife's perspective of what's going on in their environment. And in that video I spoke about in a bit of detail something which is known as the circle of fear and I'm very briefly going to explain it to you. If you've never heard of it before, check out my video observation skills. Basically the, the circle of fear is four circles within which the wildlife is at the centre of the circle. And from the outside to the inside you have four different levels of threat from the wildlife's perspective. On the outside circle, level four, everything is absolutely normal, they're going about the business, they're not concerned. When you get into circle number three, they have an awareness but they still go about their everyday business. When you get to circle number two, it's when things can rapidly change and that's when they're alert to something. They're alert to there's something out there that could pose a danger to them. Once you get into circle number one, fly, <laughs> once you get into circle number one, it's game over. They're gone. You've got too close. So it's important to understand the circle of fear. Normal activity, awareness, alertness and then flight. Okay, we'll now move on to my top five tips. Okay, the basic concept of these top five tips is something that we call the five S's. So, tip number one is to do with shape. There's nothing more dangerous and nothing more that will get wildlife on their feet and running away from you than the shape of the human body. So that's what we've got to consider. Things like the head, the shoulders, the trunk of the body, the arms, the legs. That's what we need to deal with. So what we need to do is, is to disguise that shape. So how are we going to do that? Well, let's start with the head and the shoulders. So when we look at the head and the shoulders, straight away we can see the, the face is quite bright. And we'll talk about that when we talk about one of the other, the, the other S's. So we need to disguise the shape of the head. A hat helps, a snood would help, or a face veil would help. When it comes to the body and the arms, best thing to use is uh, a material which is known as DPM, a disruptive pattern material, which you'll find in camouflage clothing. So something like a, a camouflage shirt or a camouflage jacket to disguise the shape of the body and try and blend in with your environment. When it comes to the lower half, your shape, you're really looking at trying to disguise the, 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 the colour or the depth of your legs. So you're looking at darker colours in the lower half of your body to try and blend in with your background. So shape. We need to disguise our shape. Not forgetting our camera and our tripod. Again, we need to do that. And here is an example of what you should end up with. Okay, what I want to do is just take a little time out and give you a look forward to my next video on field craft skills and that's how to carry out a wildlife, a wildlife recce. So look forward to my next video in my fuel craft series on how to do a wildlife recce. Tip number two is to do with shine. Shine is a brightness which is caused by a, a reflection of light onto an item. Um, so items with, with contrasting surfaces stand out. So immediately the first thing you'll notice when you look at, look at me that stands out from a shine perspective is my face and my hands. It doesn't matter what colour your skin is, the, the natural oils in your skin will give off a reflective light and shine. So we need to disguise a face and our hands as a minimum. And especially when you look up, and I'll give you a little demonstration. So what we need to do is we need to look at all the reflective surfaces on the human body and on our equipment that we're using as well. So how are we going to disguise that? Well, for me, the answer to it is to use a face veil or a scrim net. They're an actually brilliant piece of kit, cheap and the lightweight. And this is what you should look like. One other point that I would add to, to Shine is I wear glasses and the, the type of glasses that I wear, they have transition lenses, which means that they react to the light in, in sunny outdoor conditions and they're, they're not as bright and shiny as normal glasses. So if you wear glasses, 
think about getting a transition lens. So you should say there that to deal with shine just by simply using something like a couple of scrim nets it, it, it kills it. Um, as I said highly recommend scrim nets as a good camouflage and concealment aid. Okay tip number three of the five S's is shadow. Be aware of your shadow as you move try to move in the shadows to cover or, or conceal yourself. In this clip you'll see just how important that is. Just by moving a couple of feet you can conceal your shadow. I want to tell you a little story about um, a hawfinch, which is a bird when I was a young lad growing up, which was relatively common. Nowadays they're pretty scarce. And churchyards are great places to go and find them because they, they, they often feed on older trees, uh, on, on the berries. Uh, on this day it was bright and sunny, and as you can see from the photographs, um, standing out on the, on the outside, the shadow just gave the game away. The birds wouldn't come anywhere near the trees. And it wasn't until I stepped into the shadow of the tree that the bird actually came down and I managed to get the photograph. So always keep the sun's location in mind at all times and try and use shadows to your advantage. As I said at the very beginning when we, we looked at shape, there's nothing more dangerous to wildlife than the shape and the outline of a human being. Now if you stand out against the contrasting background, you'll silhouette yourself. So you need to be aware of things like the sky, where you're skylining yourself, water, where you're reflecting against the surface, or open spaces and backgrounds like we have here, where you're silhouetted. So, the shadows, as we mentioned previously, can be a friend. And that's what you need to be looking to be moving in. You need to be looking in the shadows to try and not silhouette yourself also. When it comes to cover and disguising your silhouette, what you're looking to do is to look through the cover and not over it or around it, thereby trying to disguise your silhouette. The biggest enemy out in the field when you're applying field craft is both movement and sound. And the surfaces that you move across and the surfaces that clothing and your equipment can betray your presence. So tip number five is to do with surface. Things like the ground, tracks, leaves, twigs, all, all creates sound when you walk across the, their surfaces. Clothing, things like Velcro on waterproofs or, or in clothing can also make sound. The thing about sound is it travels on the wind as does smell. So you have to pay particular attention to the wind when you're thinking about how you're moving across country or the surface of the ground. Some little tips to think about um, controlling surfaces on things like clothing and equipment. Think about other items that, again that, that could rattle or create noise. One thing I always do, especially if I'm, I'm going to get try and get really close, is I'll just jump up and down just to make sure that nothing's rattling. You don't want to have your car keys in your pocket or loose change <laughs> that, that can rattle and create a noise. So just one little tip at the end there. Okay, thanks for watching this edition of Kevin Hartley Photography and Fieldcraft Skills and my top five tips. They really are basic. There's nothing complicated about this subject. Some people can make it really complicated. For me, apply the top five tips, apply a bit of common sense when you're out in the field and your field craft skills should improve. So, if you've liked this, could I ask you to hit the like button? Could I also ask you to subscribe to my channel, Kevin Hartley Photography. It's completely free, it doesn't cost anything, and it just helps me to build the channel and for me to share my knowledge and experience with other photographers. So, until the next time, stay safe, Take care and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.